Hey, Redeemer family, I have three quick things for you this week. One prayer thing, one logistical thing, and one just kind of fun thing. Okay, so one prayer thing, our diocesan synod is this week, which is sort of our annual meeting that we have as a, as a diocese. So all clergy are required to attend, and we also have uh, some of our laity who are delegates there as well. It's going to be in Roanoke, Virginia, at one of our sister churches up there, Church of the Holy Spirit in Roanoke. Uh, and so if you'll just be in prayer um, for that time, we have the College of Presbyters, right? before that, which is simply a meeting of all the pastors. Um, uh, and at the same time, the College of Deacons meet, so all the deacons get together. So uh, so clergy are up there Wednesday through Saturday, um, and then our lay delegates uh, come up, I believe it's Thursday through Saturday, uh, maybe Friday through Saturday, I don't remember. But, um, but if you can just be in prayer for our diocese uh, over the course of this week as we do the business of the diocese and that we're together and that it will be an encouraging time and a, um, and a time for good leadership with, uh, within our diocesan family as well. Uh, so that's the prayer thing. The logistical thing, just want to give you a quick update on where we are with uh, with some of the staff tra transition transitions that we've been talking about as well, specifically in the youth area, um, that we have Melissa in her role until the end of November. Um, but just wanted to keep you up to date that we are moving forward in the process of of discerning next steps and so uh and so wh what i wanted to do uh is uh is meet with everyone and anyone who has interest in our in our youth ministry and where it's headed and uh and so we are i've already met with some of the upperclassmen uh, had breakfast at Chick-fil-A uh, with them last week. We are uh, meeting with the youth council soon. I'm meeting with each of the adult uh, leaders in the uh, in, currently in the youth ministry as well to hear what's going well, where do we want to see it head, what's the next steps for us, um, what kind of leader do we need in the next season. I want to hear from a lot of folks. We're also going to be uh, sending out a questionnaire in the next couple of weeks as well for to parents of anyone who is youth aged um, or about to be youth aged uh, in the next couple of years, uh, just to hear your thoughts as well. What are where where are you on on youth ministry in our direction? All of those sort of things. So, gathering information, saying a lot of prayers, uh, figuring things out so that we so that we make proper decisions on leadership for our youth ministry moving forward, where we value our youth deeply and their input, and we want to see them uh, uh, see a deep faith fostered in them and love for Jesus, and to be equipped to be in this this difficult world that they're nav navigating as well and to have fun and have deep friendships. So what's our philosophy of youth ministry? Who needs to lead us? Those are all questions that, that we're asking. So pray for that uh, as well. And I'm confident that the Lord will provide. So that's the prayer thing and the logistical thing. Then the third thing is just a fun thing. Um, in my sermon last week, we were, uh, I told a story about Charles Spurgeon and how uh, and how he was one of my heroes. He was a, called the Prince of Preachers. He lived in the mid 19th until late 19th century um, uh, in England. And, uh, and so I told the story of his conversion this past week. I just want to show you this fun thing that I have on my wall uh, over here. If you ever want to come into my office and see it, you can see it. It's sort of a prized possession of mine. Um, but that's a, that's a picture of him, not a photograph. Somebody drew that. Uh, that's, a, that's Spurgeon at his study. Um, but he would, he would preach. And while he preached, someone would take notes. Um, they would, uh, they would uh, um, transcribe what he was saying. Then the, the transcription would be given to him and he would annotate it, maybe edit some things, say, gosh, I didn't mean to say it that way. We kind of all wish that we could do that after we preach every Sunday, um, but he actually got to do it. And so this on my wall, it's a picture of him. Uh, and this is an excerpt from one of his sermons that was preached on June 5th, 1881. Um, and you can see the transcription in here, the transcriber who wrote it. But then in between there is where Spurgeon himself came and crossed out certain um, parts and wrote his annotations and his notes in there. So this is his actual handwriting in, uh, in this, uh, in, on this piece of paper. And just for the fun of it, I'll, I'll read the section of the sermon here. It starts kind of mid-sentence, but you're going to get the, the feel for what he's saying. The sermon was, uh, was called Farm Laborers. Uh, and so what this says over here, it's hard to read, but it says, Ought not the Lord to have a harvest of obedience, a harvest of holiness, a harvest of usefulness, a harvest of praise? Shall it not be so? I think some churches forget that an increase is expected from every field of the Lord's farm, for they never have a harvest or even look for one. 
The people come together and take their seats on a Sunday and listen to sermons, that is when they don't go to sleep. The sacraments are celebrated, a little money is contributed, a few, four po a few poor folk are relieved, and affairs crawl along at a snail's pace. As to affecting the whole village or endeavoring to bring the surrounding population to Christ, I do not think it has occurred to some churches to even attempt it. That's a pretty powerful, um, pretty powerful indictment of, of the church as well, and one that I hope that we can, um, in, in our ministry and our example as the church, expect that harvest uh, for, for the Lord. And so anytime you want to come see Spurgeon's handwriting, here he is up on the wall. But love you, um, pray for you every day. Your, your staff, your clergy, your community are here for you. You're not alone as you're out there in the world serving Christ and loving him. Uh, and, uh, and we pray that the Lord blesses you richly this week.